we're going to be using a breadboard and on it we are going to be having a thermistor circuit we're also going to be having this instrumentational amplifier that'll amplify our actual output which we're going to be using the waveforms from the analog discovery 2 digilent 4. i have a couple actually more than a couple a good hand few full of jumper wires that we can use to actually connect this um, and then i also have these resistors the resistors that we're going to be using here are 10 kilo ohms so now we can build our circuit we have a piece by diagram of what this is going to look like this was done by my lab partner i'm also going to include the pinout for our instrumentational amplifier when it comes to the time where we actually deal with it so that we can follow along here so looking at the piece spice we can build this um, i was also given a picture of it in the actual lab doc so we could have even built it before the piece spice without it so getting started but we're just going to use the piece spice because it's easier to look at getting started we have our breadboard now let's plant the resistors first we know that we are going to have some voltage coming in to two resistors that are essentially in parallel with each other our r1 and our r3 here and these are both 10k so we are going to put them in the same column and they need to terminate in different columns so this is going to go to this one and then this i'm just going to put it in the same column but across the breadboard so it's going to go and my hand is in the way but that's okay like this we can see that it is in the same exact column and now this one terminates across the breadboard now the r1 has a node va and after that node it has our r2 so our r2 is in series with our r1 so we're going to put it in series and then we can see that it goes into ground so we're going to put it in one of the power rails that we're going to ground later now let's put our power wire in i'm just going to use this yellow jumper wire and we're going to go from here i'm actually going to move this resistor this top one down a little bit that way i can actually get the power into this column so we're going to go from the negative rail into this right here and that's what that's going to look like now from here we need to hook up our rb and our, our um, vb and our vb is going to be our actual um, uh, node that's with the thermistor circuit and so we can take our thermistor and plant it in Remember the third mister is a basically a 10 kilo ohm impedance. It should say 10 kilo ohms on the actual um, gray part itself. And so we're going to put it in series, which means it's going to go into the same column and out in a different column. Now what we're going to want to do is connect our instrumentational amplifier because this is our bridge done. And so our instrumentational amplifier, we can just take it and I'm going to put it with the um, pin where it says 8 on the bottom left. So it says eight right here. That's the eighth pin and the first pin is up here. And I'm just going to place it um, around here is good. And we'll just push it into the board right in the middle and that should slot in. Now what we're gonna want to do is connect it. So if we look at the pin out, we have a VS and a VS that are plus and minus. The plus is gonna go into the positive power rail and the minus is gonna go into our ground. So our minus is pin five, this one right here. All we need to do is take our um, wire right here and we are going to plug it from ground into that column. So it's gonna look something just like that. It's gonna go from our pin into ground. Now we want to power this and to power it, our pin eight here needs to make its way up here. So I'm just going to take this wire, plug it in here I'm going to reach across the breadboard. It's going to go across just like this. And this whole column is the same basically wire. And it's going to just plug right into our power rail up there. And so now it has power. From here, um, we should also ground this thermistor. I forgot to do that. And because we can see from the actual piece spice, we have our RT, which is this thermistor essentially. It's going straight to ground. And so we can bring this across the breadboard with this black wire just like this it's going to be in the same column as our thermistor 
and now we can bring it into ground. We can see it's not grounded yet. We need to add an extra wire and we're just going to add a small one that will take it into ground. So that is what our circuit should look like. Now from here, we have two pins, RG, that are in pin two and three. We're going to want to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and we are going to put it in between the two. Now these pins are pins two and three, so they're going to be across over here. They're going to be the middle two pins and they are right next to each other. So you're going to have to get super creative with how you plug that in there. But that is in pins two and three. So it's super short, but it's easy to plug in there. And so this is what our breadboard should look like so far. Now from here, we know that if we look at the piece by simulation, our VB is going to go into the negative input for this instrumentational amplifier, which is our pin one. And our VB is between our R3 and our thermistor. So it's going to be this node right here. We can see that if we look at our uh, spice diagram. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this red wire that I have. It's going to go again from this node. It's going to go into our um, input, which is the pin one. And it should be perfectly curved so that it goes into the exact same column, just like this. And so it's going to go into this pin. Now what we need to do is take input from our VA. And our VA is going to be right here. It's between our R1 and our R2. And we're going to take it and put it into our positive input, which is all the way over here. For this one, I am going to use a longer jumper wire. So I'm just going to go from here. And I'm going to go across the bedboard into here. And that is going to be our positive input. So this is what our breadboard is going to look like this is it fully assembled now all we have to do is connect it to our scope and power so from our analog discovery 2 we're going to take a grounding wire which is a black wire i'm just going to place it right here in this row then from here i'm going to take our power which is red and i'm going to place it in this top part right here now also i want to um, take these scope probes to analyze this our blue is going to be our output, and so it's going to go into our V out for the instrumentational amplifier, which is pin 7. So it's going to go into the same column as that pin. So that'll that's what it's going to look like. Now, we need to plug our other blue wire into ground. And this is the one that has the white stripe on it. So we'll take this one, and I actually think I plug the wrong one in. So this one has the white stripe on it. This one is going to go to ground. And the other blue wire does not have a stripe on it. This one is going to go into our voltage output to monitor it. And so that's what that's going to look like. We can move these other wires out of the way. That's all we have now. Now we want to take our um, channel one and we're going to plug it in. Uh, this is the one without the stripe and it's going to go into our node VB. And then we're going to go take the one with our stripe and it's going to go into VA. Now, I think these might be backwards. I will check in a second on our scope. So if these are backwards, I'll mention it when we look at the scope. We're just going to switch these two. That's what would make it backwards or not backwards. So we'll come back to this and we'll take a look at it in a second. Now, we want to send power, or not power, but we want to send a DC source into our instrumentational amplifier. And to do that, we are going to use a scope channel, and we want to put this inside of our reference. And our reference is going to be this pin 6. So we're fully maxing out this side right here. We have our power, we have our ground, we have our output, and now we are going to have the pin 6, which is reference. So we are going to take the yellow wire that does not have a stripe on it, and we're just going to plug it in right next to our blue one. And so this is what our breadboard should look like. These two wires are connected into our instrumentational amplifier. This one was part of our circuit. These are our two orange wires that come off our um, analog discovery. And then these are grounded. And this is power. And so this is our breadboard. 
there's any issues, we'll come back to it and we'll fix it. Again, the only thing is that these two might be backwards. We can easily check that to, by seeing if our scope is going in the correct direction. But now we're going to look at the actual scope itself. Now we're going to look at our waveform. Um, the actual power, not power, but the actual orange wires were in wrong. We want to have the negative, which is the orange with the white stripe, going into our VB and the positive going into our VA. That makes sense because our VA is the positive going into our instrumentational amplifier. Now, looking at these, I have the power supplies turned off. We're going to have our peak to peaks not in the actual front of this. We want to be looking at average between our C1 and C2. So this is what we're going to be looking at. To get it, we just go to add and then define measurements and then channel one or channel two and then go to vertical and select it from there. Now for channels, um, we're going to start both at zero volts. We could change these if we wanted to. And we're going to make these at like 200 millivolts for our channel one and then 200 millivolts for our channel two. We can see it shoots right up there and that's because it starts at 2.5. So we're going to make our offset for our channel two to be 2.5 volts. And it um, needs to maybe actually be a negative 2.5 for this one. So if we change it to negative 2.5, it's still away. So we will switch the range to be one volt per division and we get it back right here. So that's our channel two and this is our channel one. Now they are going in opposite directions, um, which might also be because we didn't need to switch the scopes. I'm going to try changing this to a positive again. Uh, this might be a little bit better. So they are coming together. And that means that they're going correct. Now, my hands are not very warm, but we do have a heater here that we're going to use to test this. So they are as they are right now. And if I put this next to the heater, we can see that they come together. Um, but the blue line should actually be moving up more. It's going to be moving up at a couple hundred millivolts per division. And so that's what that looks like. We can see that they're coming together. Now, I do believe, though, that the blue line should be moving up um, away from our yellow. They should both be moving up. So there could be something wrong with the wiring in our circuit. But that's not our concern right now. Right now, we're just demonstrating that it works. And we can put this next to our little heater friend and we can see that it does move up at a couple hundred millivolts per division and in fact if we wanted to see it move more we could change this down to be 100 millivolts per division instead of the range of 200 millivolts putting this next to a heater it'll go up fast again and so we can see how the circuit works and we previously just looked at the breadboard for it